Hi everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today we're going to continue working on our 1948 Ford 8N. What we're going to do today is we're going to get the hydraulic pump put in, the lift cover fixed up and reinstalled, and we're going to um, change the seal in the PTO shaft and get that in. And if we have time, we'll get all the three-point linkage installed also. This is our hydraulic pump. It fits down here in the belly. It's driven. Uh, the PTO shaft goes through it and that's what drives it. That's why on these old Fords you have to turn on the PTO to run the hydraulic pump. Um, this, all the parts for this are available. You can, you can buy the parts and you can overhaul these, but this one worked fine. There was zero issues with it. It lifted, it, it dropped, it held the weight. So we didn't touch it, we just cleaned it and we're gonna put it right back in. I'm just gonna put a little grease around it and a new gasket and we'll put it on the transmission jack and put it up. Then I'll show you a little trick that I do with the bolts. It's very important when you're cleaning underneath it, you get all the bits of gasket. This hole here lines up with this port, and that's where your hydraulic pressure goes up through this tube, up into the lift cover. So if there's any crap uh, that this thing can sit on and not seal properly, it'll leak like crazy. Here's my bolt trick. This thing's held up in there with nine bolts. Five of them, you can see there, the holes are blind, no oil. Four of them, the ones on the ends, the holes go right through. So what I do on those ones, I put a copper washer under the head of the bolt and that'll seal it up so we don't get any seepage around there. We use our little transmission jack here to lift this thing in. It's the easiest way. Now I got my torque wrench set to 50. The first two I always do are the ones on either side of this oil port. Now we can install the two drain plugs. This is the one for the hydraulic pump. With a new gasket. And this pipe plug is the drain plug for the differential. Now we're gonna take apart this lift cover and get it all fixed up and back within factory spec. A few minutes of this and then we'll have another go at it. A little bit of heat did the trick, came right off. All right, the man is on with four carriage bolts that come up through the top of the cover. So we'll take them off. Once we get these four carriage bolts out, then the lift cylinder just comes out like that. We'll get the piston out of it and see what we got to do inside there after. So next we'll get this cotter pin out of here. Pull this pin out and we can get the, this is the push rod for the lift. This is this little woodruff key. Oh, where'd it go? There it is. We'll take out these four bolts and then we can move, remove the, the quadrant. Now we can take off the spring seat. Now this should come out. Get the rock shaft out of the way. Should come out through there like that. Now all that's left is this. And all we gotta do to get this out is remove one cotter pin. That comes out like that. And then this is held on there by one cotter pin. I'll be back in a sec once that's out. There's the last bit of it. Now we can get all this stuff cleaned up 
and we can start uh, servicing it and get it put back together. While we wait for the lift cover parts to dry, because I power washed them, we're going to go ahead and change the seal on the PTO shaft, um, if I can remember how to do it. So down in here, there's a little snap ring we got to get out. All right. There we go. Hopefully, this is an aftermarket PTO shaft, so hopefully they use factory dimensions. Old seal is out, new seal is going to go in. So which way does it go? Good question. This side here, you can see, that's got, you can see right in there, it's got a little spring around it. That's the oil side. So this side goes in, and this here is just a dust, a dust lip. There we go. She's home. So we'll go ahead now and drop our PTO shaft back in. The trick with this now is usually getting this thing to go through that dust seal without um, without wrecking it. Here's what I need. It's going in nice and straight, so hopefully it'll go. There, look at that. Perfect. It didn't fold it under. That's what makes us happy. There it is. Bottomed out. You can feel that seal now. It's got a lot more drag on it than the old seal. That's good. Now we can install our PTO shaft. We've got a nice new gasket here. We're going to slowly guide this in there and get it to engage the, the hydraulic pump. There we go. And then we'll get her in there. Perfect. And I'll grab my four bolts and we'll bolt it down. We'll get these torqued up. Next, we're going to fit this PTO shield. Now, um, these tractors never really came with a PTO shield. So this here is off, uh, off a newer 1000 series Ford. It came off, uh, I think, a 2000. So I have one of these on my Ferguson in it, and it fit quite well. Although I, I do remember I had to do some monkey business to make it fit. So... We're going to have a go at this and see what we got to do to make it fit. Another thing that we have to work around with our, um, our PTO guard is the, the bracket or the hanger for the swinging drawbar. So we're going to get that on there now and see in a minute how the other thing is going to fit around it. I had to, in the end, Space this out, just uh, the thickness of a half inch nut to give enough room for the check chains to swing behind it without contacting the cover when it's on and it all works perfectly now. So this is good. I can take these parts off and clean them up and paint them red. First thing we got to check when working on an 8N hydraulic lift is the cam pin. You can see here, it runs on here. And that's what, that's what controls the, the height of the, of the lift. And this thing wears out. This one's not so bad. I've seen some worn almost to there. I knocked it most of the way out, turned it 180 degrees, and we'll knock it back in. And our, our new pin, we'll keep it for another day. I'm going to put this back together now, kind of in the opposite order that I took it apart, if I can actually remember what that order was. That was an adventure, but we got the linkage all back in. Now I'm going to spin it around and I can put the spring seat and everything back on. This, very important. That's the felt seal for this.
Now I can install the quadrant. Now we put on the friction disc. And I have to put the little key in, the little Woodruff key. So a washer, then our tension spring, and then the jam nut. And then you just tighten this up till you get um, the tension you like. That's a little tight. Yeah, we'll leave it like that for now. Now I can put this guy on. Yep. Okay, now we can put the dog bone link in here. Got to get a pair of pliers to bend that cotter pin. Our hydraulic cylinder inside is in fine shape and uh, the steel rings are okay. Uh, you can change this to the newer style piston with the uh, with the o-ring, but Honestly, these work just fine if they're working well So we'll get this in there. I just got to grab my ring compressor now, what's also important is There's three rings so you want your gaps basically every hundred and twenty degrees you want to stagger your gaps. So yeah, we're in good shape there. All right, let me find the ring compressor. All right, we got our ring squashed. In she goes. Oh yeah, that feels nice in there. We'll have no trouble with that piston. Oh, more gasket grease. Hmm. Okay, so we got one goes here. And two little ones there. We'll put a little grease on the end of that. Just for good luck. Okay, got our square bolts here, got long ones and short ones. Come on. There we go. Now we can flip it over and put the nuts on. That's our lift cover all back together. Now we can adjust it up. <laughs> 